for 60 miles per hour down in Kenosha. It was up to 60 in Racine. Here in Milwaukee, uh, about 50 miles per hour. It is not the coldest opening day ever, but it is the windiest opening day ever. We're standing outside of Hellfair Field, and you can see, of course, American Family Field with the comfort of a roof overhead. Let's talk about those winds. They continue to be very blustery, and it is. It's difficult to hang on to the hat. And so we're talking about wind still gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour across most of southeastern Wisconsin. And uh, on top of that, we did upgrade from the wind advisory that we had to a high wind warning in Milwaukee as well as Racine and Kenosha counties. This goes until 7 o'clock. It's not going to be a magic formula at 7 o'clock. The wind isn't all of a sudden going to die down. It's just going to get a little bit better as the evening goes on. When it gets a whole lot better and the winds completely die down, coming up in Weather Watch 12. And Mark is just one member of the 12 News team covering the spring right of passage known as opening day in Milwaukee. The Brewers are hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. Let's go next to Joyce Garbasiak inside American Family Field. And Joyce, thankfully no wind inside there. No wind here. We can certainly appreciate the beauty and the practicality of the roof here at American Family Field. And I'm proud to report so far so good. Brewers up 2-0 in the top of the third. We talked about those high winds and my colleague 12 News Kent Wainscott spent some time outside with tailgaters earlier today. And Kent, you actually experienced the dangers firsthand of those high winds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we, that's absolutely true, Joyce. You can take a look at the flag on this decked out van behind me here. You can see that it's still blowing really, really strongly out here and a lot of uh, flying debris out here in the parking lots today. People tying down trash bags and tables and grills and all of those uh, flying projectiles. We took a couple of direct hits, as you uh, referenced, from a collapsing canopy and a flying cooler lid today. But uh, a lot of the folks out here today, thousands of them, um, we're ready the, to take on the challenge. A little blustery, yes. This is a challenge. Today. Very challenging today. The top of his grill went flying over there. You're trying to set up a grill and table? Uh, impossible. We had tables in there. We put them back away because they kept tipping over. Chips are flying. Grills are flying. Lighting grills was nearly as challenging as holding them down, and many skipped the grill entirely. We have easy food today. So we're going to walk around and see stuff everybody you can, else. Stuff you can hang on to and secure. Exactly, exactly. The wind threw a curve at anyone trying to play catch or bags. Seen more curveballs out here than we're going to see. <laughs> the inside. one almost dead stop in midair. Dumpster lids flapped and crashed. A couple of portageons appeared to have been toppled. And paper plates and napkins soared, sending tailgaters racing to chase them down. And despite a warning from the brewers on social media, a few folks tried to put up tents or canopies. Y'all just lost it there for a minute. <laughs> a bit. After struggling to anchor theirs, John and Debbie Zwicky thought they beat the wind gusts. They were mistaken. Was a canopy the best idea today? In the end, we're going to like it. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Well, they have a good attitude about it. Kent, did they ever get that canopy to stay up in the wind? <laughs> they did not. They tried it a few more times, Joyce, and then they just gave up. But like thousands of other people out here, the uh, wind gusts did alter their opening day plans a little bit and their tailgate experience, but it didn't stop them from taking part in what is really part of the uh, traditional opening day experience out here. All right, Ken, thanks very much. And you're absolutely right. The wind did not stop a lot of people. Some of the tailgaters braved the elements long before the parking lots even opened. My colleague 12 News Hannah Hilliard was with the people who were first in line. Here's her report. One car and then another pulled into the ballpark Thursday morning as the sun hardly hovered over American Family Field. You got here at what time? We got here just like a little while ago, right? You guys pulled up actually. Like 7.45? Yep, about that time. So. Why? It'd be here early. She wanted, uh, wife wanted to be first, but we're second. Second to Tom Arndt of Columbus, Wisconsin. The sun's barely up, but you're already in line. Why? To get in early. Dedicated. Who arrived at 7 a.m. with plenty of time to spare. So what are you going to do for the next eight hours? Take a nap. Talk to, visit with Sandra. Talk to people. Maybe go up by the stadium and take some pictures. At least now I can get pictures without anybody being in the parking lot. By mid morning, a couple dozen more people had joined the early risers, but this is why they tell me they got here so early to beat the traffic and get a prime parking spot. They know the drill because they come every year. What's it about opening day you enjoy? The tailgating, <laughs> watching, watching the people. And there's plenty of people. 
Nothing better than opening day in Milwaukee, man. With a sellout crowd at American Family Field. In Milwaukee, Hannah Hilliard, WISN 12 News. The true diehards. An opening day always comes with a lot of pop and circumstance. That is a lot of power in that 13 year old voice. She is Liamani Segura of Racine and she sang the national anthem this year as she had done last year and in 2020 as well. Segura is currently a member of the cast of High School Musical the series which is coming out soon on Disney Plus. Poignant start to the game, a survivor of the Waukesha Christmas Parade tragedy throughout the ceremonial first pitch. 12-year-old Tucker Sparks was injured in the November attack. His 8-year-old brother Jackson was the youngest of the victims who passed. 12 Sports' Stephanie Sutton joins us now. And Steph, we were talking about Brandon Woodruff being the starting pitcher today. In a little bit of trouble right now, but so far hopefully he can get out of this inning at peace. Uh, yes, hopefully he can get out of this inning right now, Joyce. Now, so far, though, the Brewers have given their fans here something to cheer about in their home opener against the St. Louis Cardinals. That noise didn't sound very good, but let's 